Today I'd like to talk about Zoom 2 for the PC. This is the CD-ROM version and there's a very good reason for that. You see, this video isn't really about the game itself, even though it's a pretty decent little platformer developed by Gremlin Graphics from 1994. It's not even about the box contents, including a Zoo's postcard, sheet of stickers, depictive manual, or even this splendidly coloured poster. It's about that CD, which incidentally isn't really necessary for this game. You see, during the mid-90s, CD-ROM was an important emerging technology, and so even games which could fit on a single high-density floppy disk were baked into CD format, perhaps with a, a new 3D rendered intro or a selection of music, but nothing really that warranted the expense of a CD-ROM drive. But it also meant that the odd warning would appear on these discs from certain publishers, warning us not to play track one of this game CD on any audio CD player. So it would be rude not to, really. For this task, I'll be using a Sanyo MCD Z10 boombox, a fine looking machine which oozes that mid 90s sound appeal, an era when we were moving rapidly away from cassette tape and onto that new circular digital medium. To demonstrate its versatility, first I'll pop in a tape. Here I have The Crystal Mountain by Nightlight, otherwise known as Snow Kitten. I've been listening to their stuff for years and I love albums on tape, so this is no exception. There's a bit of wow and flutter from this system, but I imagine a few new bands and a bit of grease would sort that right out. Anyway, on to the CD. Right, track one. Let's see what all the fuss is about. Uh, 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 are they being serious? Oh, oh wait, I just picked up the wrong CD. Yeah, there you go. I left Rick Astley right next to it. <laughs> oh, easy mistake to make. Let's try that again. And there we have it, absolutely nothing, no sound whatsoever. It's also the only track on this disc, so it seems a bit of a strange disc to place that warning on in the first place. If there were some audio tracks on here as well, as was common with a lot of CD games of the time, then it would have made more sense to play this disc in an audio player. Also, I find it a little amusing that the track length is 404. So, just like a 404 webpage error, the contents of this track are apparently absent. But, it might be that we just need to try a different CD player to get a true idea of what could be going on here. Okay, okay so now I'm at my parents' house and they have a Grundig stereo from about, what is it, 95? Mm, yes. About 95, 94, so let's see if it works with this one. Now I have a sneaky suspicion that we might get a different output from this system, which I'll explain more about in a second. Let's try. Ah, yes, there we go. Now, this is what that warning is for. 
It's nothing outrageous or shocking really, is it? We're just hearing the raw binary patterns from the data track interpreted as CD audio. It's not going to destroy your system or send you foaming at the mouth. But I guess if you had the volume turned up high, it might cause some auditory pain. Or at worst, I guess it could blow your speakers. So how come the Sanyo played nothing, yet this Grundig system emitted what can only be described as a ZX Spectrum tape on steroids? Oh, also, thank you to my parents for letting me borrow our aging stereo system we bought in the mid-90s. So the reason for this is due to how each of these sound systems are designed. But to explain the design, we first must look at the structure of the data on a CD. The compact disc digital audio standard was established in the joint Philips and Sony Red Book release way back in 1981. The Red Book essentially being just a rule book, named so after its binding colour. But it's also the start of a rainbow of these books, defining further standards. The Yellow Book would follow in 1984, and its purpose was to define the compact disc read-only memory format. The same format, of course, used to store data on this Zool 2 CD. The significant difference between the two is that the audio CD allows for 2,352 bytes per sector, or time code frames if you prefer, plus 98 control bytes which hold the timing information which you see on your stereo LCD display. CD-ROM structure, however, splits that sector up into 12 bytes for synchronization, 4 bytes for header information, 288 bytes for error correction, and 2048 bytes for the actual data itself. So, if you put a CD with a data track into a fairly recent CD player, it will be able to recognise the data track structure and either throw you an error when you try and play it, or in the case of my Sanyo, simply silence out the noise of what it perceives as incorrectly structured data. If you have an older stereo which hasn't been programmed to ascertain whether data is actually formatted as compact disc digital audio before belting it out, then it will simply attempt to play it as it comes. Despite the differences in the format, the stereo will just start reading a large, single track of what it presumes to be sweet, sweet melody. I mean, the chances of someone even having a CD-ROM to put in their spanking new CD player were incredibly low until the mid-90s, so building in these checks just weren't deemed necessary. But you may point out that the Grundig stereo is actually from the mid-90s, and about the same age as the Sanyo. So how come the difference in playback? Well, I suspect this is likely down to the quality of goods. Both systems are modern enough to weed out data tracks, however because the Grundig is a cheaper system, it likely utilises components which just don't care. Perhaps they're older components that just don't know, or they're cheaper components that lack the ability to check, but regardless the Grundig has no idea as to what a data track is, so it does its best to play it as CD audio, and it really is the CD player attempting to process the binary pits and lands of the CD surface as an uncompressed WAV format. The result of this is noise streaming in at a relatively high board rate, and if we slow down the audio, perhaps to a more familiar speed, then it starts to sound just a little bit more like an 80s home computer. Oh yes. Or even a dial-up modem from the 90s. It's, it's blissful. I could just drift off to this. Maybe we'll play Zool 2 another day. Now this might have been a bit of a silly video, but hopefully it's explained a few noggins of interest. That's all I can hope for really. Anyway, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.